A new study confirmed that Earth is surrounded by a huge bubble. Better said, the whole solar system is embedded in this vast bubble. And no, it isn't one of those bubbles that we used to blow when we were kids. It's not a matter of water and soap. In fact, it is way bigger. Just to say, it is so big that if you had the chance to drive your car at the speed of light and decided to cross this bubble, it would take you something like a thousand years at the speed of light. Also, this bubble borders drive the formation of all nearby young stars. This is exactly what a new study suggests. But where does this bubble come from? Will it eventually disappear? And is this a unique feature of the solar system, or do different star systems own different bubbles? Keep watching the video to get to know the answers to all of these questions. Let's go! We live in a huge bubble. What's hiding outside the solar system? Well, let's be clear. The existence of such a bubble was already known for decades. Astronomers have been referring to it as the local bubble. It is a giant void surrounded by thousands of young stars. Some studies were made, but needless to say, this is a hard topic, and for this reason, much has remained unclear about this bubble. For example, we don't really know how big it is. Some estimations suggest it should be something like a thousand light years in diameter. However, we are not even sure this bubble is a perfect sphere. In fact, it is likely to have an irregular shape. It seems to be narrower in the galactic plane, becoming somewhat egg-shaped or elliptical and may widen above and below the galactic plane, becoming shaped like an hourglass. What astronomers recently found, however, is that the local bubble may support star formation. What exactly happens is that they saw some star-forming regions lay exactly on the bubble's surface. As Catherine Zucker, an astronomer at Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore said, we stumbled upon this discovery completely by chance. Basically, they were very lucky. But before coming to the study results, I want to explain how we believe such bubbles are created in the universe. Here's the thing. Everything starts with a cute star. This star evolves during its life, and eventually it's so unlucky to go supernova. For the ones on Earth, a supernova is a beautiful event to watch because it can reach high luminosity. A supernova could be so bright that its light could be compared to the one of a full moon. So, supernovae are stars that suddenly increase drastically in brightness, outshining their own host galaxies. They reach this brightness in just a few hours and take from weeks to months to fade. Scientists classify different types of supernovae by their emitted light signatures, which are called spectra. These show what elements the original star created and thus released into space after it exploded. Type 1a supernovae. Their spectra show very little hydrogen and a lot of carbon. Astronomers believe this type of supernova results from a white dwarf that has collected too much material for its internal pressure to withstand. Type 1b supernovae. Their spectra contain very little hydrogen. They also show helium. Scientists think this type of supernova results from the death of a star at least 25 times the sun's mass. Type 1c supernovae. Their spectra contain very little hydrogen or helium. They form like a type 1b supernova. Type 2 supernovae. This type of supernova has a lot of hydrogen and helium in its spectrum. Astronomers think this type results from the death of a star larger than eight times our sun's mass. Such a star can fuse elements up to iron. What's left after a supernova is called a supernova remnant. The supernova remnant is bounded by an expanding shock wave and consists of ejected material expanding from the explosion and the interstellar material it sweeps up and shocks along the way. There are two common routes to a supernova. Either a massive star may run out of fuel, ceasing to generate fusion energy in its core, and collapse inward under the force of its own gravity to form a neutron star or a black hole, or a white dwarf star may accrete material from a companion star until it reaches a critical mass and undergoes a thermonuclear explosion. In either case, the resulting supernova explosion expels much of all of the stellar material with velocities as much as 10% the speed of light, which is approximately 30,000 kilometers per second. These speeds are highly supersonic, so a strong shock wave forms ahead of the ejecta. That heats the upstream plasma up to temperatures well above millions of Kelvin. The shock continuously slows down over time as it sweeps up the ambient medium, but it can expand over hundreds or thousands of years and over tens of parsecs 
before its speed falls below the local sound speed. One of the best observed young supernova remnants was formed by SN1987A, a supernova in the Large Magellanic Cloud that was observed in February of 1987. Another one is instead the so-called Crab Nebula. Aren't they beautiful? Well, what we think about these bubbles in the universe is that their exceptionally sparse gas, as we see for example in our local bubble, is indeed the result of supernovae that exploded within the past 10 to 20 million years. The gas remains in an excited state, emitting in the X-ray band. Geminga, a pulsar in the constellation Gemini, was once thought to be the remnant of a single supernova that created the local bubble. But now multiple supernovae in subgroup B1 of the Pleiades moving group are thought to have been responsible, becoming what is called remnant supershell. So basically, the thing is, our solar system is surrounded by what is thought to be the rest of death stars. What the study aimed to do was to create a map of the major landmarks in the solar system's galactic neighborhood. Scientists analyzed the positions, shapes, and motions of dense gases and young stars within about 650 light years of the Sun. In order to accomplish their goal, Zucker and her team used data from the most recent Gaia data release. Gaia is an ambitious mission that aims to reveal the composition, formation, and evolution of the galaxy. It will provide unprecedented positional and radial velocity measurements with the accuracies needed to produce a stereoscopic and kinematic census of about 1 billion stars in our galaxy and throughout the local group. This amounts to about 1% of the galactic stellar population. This huge stellar census will provide the data needed to tackle an enormous range of important problems related to the origin, structure, and evolutionary history of our galaxy. For example, Gaia will identify which stars are relics from smaller galaxies long ago, swallowed by the Milky Way. By watching for the large-scale motion of stars in our galaxy, it will also probe the distribution of dark matter, the invisible substance thought to hold our galaxy together. The research involved mapping three dimensions of space, three dimensions of motion, and a time dimension. In fact, the universe is tridimensional and stars and gas can move in all directions, which means they can have velocity components in X, Y, and Z directions. And we needed time because we wanted to reconstruct the evolution of the bubble and, more in general, the evolution of the star-forming regions over the past millennia. This was never done before. Of course, we had some understanding of it, but most of the studies were just based on static 2D images of star-forming regions, which means it wasn't so representative of reality. One thing about the stars in these star-forming regions is that, in a certain sense, they remember where they came from. Do you want to know what it means? Before answering the question, consider liking or disliking the video so that we can continue to improve and make these videos better for you, the viewer. Plus, be sure to click the bell and subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss any of our weekly videos. The great thing about a star is that it doesn't forget about its origins. They know exactly where they came from, and this information is written in physics, law, and measurements. Thus, analyzing the motions of these young stars helped the scientists reconstruct the chain of events behind the creation and growth of the local bubble. They discovered that these stars were traveling mainly straight away from the bubble's surface, which suggested they were moving because the bubble was expanding over time, just like it happens to a balloon when you inflate it. From what we know, the local bubble is still growing at a rate of 6.7 kilometers per second. This is quite a slow speed when we consider events in space. The researchers found that a series of about 15 catastrophic star explosions known as supernovae, likely began taking place near the local bubble center about 14 million years ago. The supernova explosions triggered a shock wave, and this expanding shock wave subsequently swept up a shell of dense, cool gas, that is, the surface of the local bubble, which has now collapsed to form thousands of new stars, Zucker said. But why is the solar system right in the middle of the local bubble? Well, that's purely due to chance. When the first supernova took place, the solar system was quite away from it. But solar systems traveling around the galaxy brought it by chance in the middle of the local bubble. The fact that the Sun is currently in the middle of the local bubble suggests that such super bubbles may be pervasive across the Milky Way. Otherwise, what are the chances that our Sun is right in the middle of one? Basically, a nice comparison could be made between the Milky Way and Swiss cheese. 
Both of them have holes, and the Milky Way ones were blasted out by supernovae created by poor dying stars. What scientists are thinking to do now is to map out the locations, sizes, and shapes of a larger number of bubbles in our galaxy. Who knows, maybe the local bubble is currently interacting with other bubbles in our neighborhood. However, one difficult challenge could be the age determination of the so-called supernova progenitors. Supernova progenitors are the original stars which underwent supernova. The fact is, due to the shock and conservation of angular momentum, and depending on the orbital properties of the progenitor, supernova remnants can be found far away from where the explosion actually happened, and this makes our task more difficult. New data from the Gaia mission, Gaia Data Release 3, will definitely help, as it will provide 3D space motions for 30 million stars, a key ingredient in piecing together this puzzle. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching, everyone. What do you think about the local bubble? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe, and we'll see you next time on the channel.